Iran has criticized South Korea for refusing to pay out over 6 billion U.S. dollars owed to Iran for oil exports that have been frozen in Korean banks for nearly two years now and is seeking legal options. South Korea was the biggest buyer of Iranian gas condensate with 300,000 barrels per day on top of 100,000 barrels per day of crude oil. But the country stopped the imports after the United States imposed sanctions on Iran's oil industry in November 2018. Well, the Central Bank of Iran said the actions of banks in South Korea were preventing Iran from using the money to buy food and medicines, trade that's exempt from U.S. sanctions. It says the two countries have been working on a special trade vehicle similar to that established with the European Union, which would allow Iran to complete humanitarian transactions using the money locked in Korean banks. The EU mechanism, known as Instex, provides European companies with a trading vehicle to sell goods and services to Iran without using U.S. dollars, uh, routing transactions through U.S. banks or moving money across the Iranian border. For more on this story, we join via Skype by Syed Marandi, a professor of English Literature and Orientalism at the University of Tehran in Iran. He is on Skype. Professor Marandi, great having you on the show. A very good evening to you. Thank you. Thank Do you want you to share me. with us uh, more perspective on, on what could be behind South Korea refusing to unlock about six billion U.S. dollars it owes for Iran and oil exports? Actually, it's uh, a bit over seven billion dollars. It's between seven and eight billion dollars. The Iranians have exported oil and fuel to South Africa to uh, South Korea, and the Korean government has refused. Uh, to pay Iran for the fuel that it has uh, purchased and used. Uh, so at a time when the Iranians are paying, facing uh, great difficulty in dealing with the coronavirus, uh, unfortunately, the numbers are up again in Iran. Uh, the Iranians brought down the numbers, and the, the, uh, and but we've seen over the last two weeks or so, the numbers both of new infections as well as deaths rise. And the government is again mobilizing all of its resources to, to combat the virus. But not only, unfortunately, is South Korea preventing Iran from using its own money to purchase the goods, uh, the supplies, the medical supplies needed to fight the virus, but the South, uh, South Korean government has actually uh, prevented Iran from purchasing masks uh, a while back at the same time, simultaneously, when South Korea sent masks to the United States as aid. So the Iranians had purchased, ma they were purchasing masks, and then it was forbidden by the South Koreans. But simultaneously, they were sending masks as, uh, as aid to the United States. And that was very offensive to the Iranians, because not only have they frozen a huge amount of Iranian money in their bank accounts, but uh, they've also treated Iran uh, in a way in which only Trump would be proud. So why is, or rather, why does Iran feel that South Korea is buckling up to pressure from its U.S. ally uh, by withholding these funds? Well, that is a good question. Uh, there are other countries under pressure from the United States, uh, and uh, but Iran is speaking with them and finding mechanisms to bring in their cash in, in their bank accounts, both in Asia and our region as well as in, um, in Europe. Uh, and some countries are now finding ways to import Iranian fuel without using the U.S. dollar and, use, and without using the um, global financial institutions. But South Korea is so far unwilling to find a solution to this problem. And it has a, a very large amount of Iranian oil wealth. Uh, the Iranian cash in their banks that is a, a result of Iran's selling of oil to South Korea. For the Iranians, this is a bit mis is very mystifying because Iran has always had very good relations with South Africa. Iran has always been a huge market for South Korea, sorry. And uh, 
the, but the, the South Korean government, despite the fact that the president is um, a bit left-leaning and uh, he claims to be more independent uh, of, uh, of the United States and more progressive, but they have so far refused Iran to even touch uh, its own money at, at this time, at a time when Iran is facing a difficult situation, as you can imagine, in South Africa. So um, just as in South Africa, uh, the government is facing major challenges, the Iranians are also facing major challenges. The only difference is that in the case of Iran, at the behest of the United States, countries like Korea are withholding Iran's money to prevent them from carrying out the fight with success. The truth of the matter is that, is that the United States wants the virus to spread in Iran. And they are trying desperately to make the situation in Iran uh, more difficult for ordinary people and to have more deaths and to have more infections. But the, the very sad and disappointing thing for Iranians is to see that the South Korean government, which has always had a good relationship with Iran, uh, become a part of this policy. Now, Professor, for purposes of understanding the genesis of this impasse, I think it's very important that we start discussing about the terms of uh, the trade deal between those, those two countries. I mean, what are these terms? Because now South Korea said uh, it used some of the funds to purchase, uh, you know, to expand the humanitarian trade that it has with Iran. So it does appear that there was an agreement in the first place. Well, you... A country cannot use the wealth of a, another country for humanitarian trade. That's Iranian money. And Iran has to decide what to do with that money. So uh, the Korean government is taking a bit of Iran's own money, very small amounts, and sending Korean products uh, to Iran, or they are willing to do so. Uh, which and they're benefiting so they're keeping the bulk of Iranian money and they're selling the goods to themselves uh, they're, they're using the money to purchase Korean goods and then send those to Iran and, and they call that humanitarian whereas the Iranians only uh, need that money for things that are not produced in Korea the bulk of the money right now is needed actually to uh, provide adequate uh, not only medical supplies, but also to help ordinary people uh, have an incentive to stay at home. Uh, so the Iranians, because of the difficult economic situation and because countries like South Korea are holding Iranian wealth and refraining from turning it over to the Iranians, it has made it much more difficult for the Iranian government to shut down the economy. So in the case of uh, your country, South Africa, when the government shuts down different parts of the economy, they have to support the population in different ways, and that needs financial capabilities. So the South Koreans are withholding this money, and not only are they preventing us from pur purchasing supplies that, are, that exist in different parts of the world, but they also prevent the Iranian government from having the resources to carry out the... Uh, shutdowns in a more successful way so that ordinary people will not be hurt. Well, P Professor, when you say that one country cannot allow the other country to use its wealth, uh, you know, for humanitarian purposes, I mean, South Korea said there was a deal, or like a special trade vehicle similar to that um, established in European Union banks that would allow Iran to complete humanitarian transactions using the money locked in, in, uh, in, in South Korean banks. So, the issue here, I do understand, is that Iran has backtracked on, this, on that special uh, trade uh, vehicle. Well, again, the problem is that just as in Europe, uh, the, the instex mechanism in Europe, it has not worked. The Europeans have done nothing with it. And it's not a humanitarian issue. In fact, this, I think, for many Iranians is very insulting because the Europeans and the Koreans are not providing us with any humanitarian assistance. We don't need their humanitarian assistance. This is our money. Our money is locked up in their banks at the orders of the United States. Uh, if they really don't want to deal with Iran, then they shouldn't take Iranian oil and they shouldn't or take Iranian goods and consume them. 
either they, when you consume something, you pay for it. So they're withholding Iranian money. They create a, 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 a vehicle. They call it humanitarian, whereas all of this is Iranian money. And they're saying that you have to use these particular goods that are produced in our country that you don't really need. So, how, like, Iran produces its own masks now. Iran produces its own ventilators. Iran is now exporting these products. It produces its own medical supplies needed. But it needs the money in order to help people stay at home, to stay safe, because the government has to support the population in these difficult times. So for the South Koreans to dictate to Iran what you can and can't, cannot uh, do with that money, and to limit the amount of money that Iran uses, and it's Iranian money, is quite audacious. So what's the likely course of action uh, will Iran take? And given the special uh, relationship that South Korea has with the United States, uh, whatever action that Iran will take, will it not invite more sanctions from the United States? Well, the United States has sanctioned everything in Iran. There is nothing that the United States hasn't sanctioned, and it simply cannot sanction anymore. And gradually we are seeing in Iran that the sanctions regime is weakening. We're seeing countries across the world becoming uh, more uh, open in their uh, trade relations with Iran. And y your viewers may have heard that the Iranians and the Chinese are on the verge of signing a major uh, agreement to enhance their cooperation and to enhance investment and joint economic ventures uh, in the two countries, ranging from high-tech industries to investment in oil and gas and minerals. So we do see that countries are becoming increasingly steadfast in resisting U.S. Uh, policies, especially now since, since the United States is increasing its sanctions against countries across the board, from Venezuela to Cuba to China to Russia, Iran, Syria, Lebanon, uh, Yemen, across the board, these sanctions exist, and therefore it's make, it's, they're overusing that sanction regime. But in, in some of the countries that do have Iranian money in their banks, they are seriously cooperating with Iran to uh, solve this problem, and pr the problem in some cases has been solved. But in the, South, in the case of South Korea, the South Korean government has done nothing so far. You know, Professor, I've had this conversation with you uh, previously, and uh, you seem to have a problem admitting that uh, these sanctions imposed uh, on Iran by the United States cause a major economic shock to Iran, which has forced uh, Iran to uh, look for further assistance from the IMF. Do we know at this stage how um, I mean, the progress with regards to that process? Well, Iran has, to a large degree, adjusted uh, because of the sanctions, because the sanctions didn't take place yesterday they, or you know, last month. They've been around for two, three years now. Uh, with regards to the IMF, uh, again, it's, it's, uh, it's Iran's right, because Iran has been paying its dues to the IMF for decades. And it is one of the very few countries that has never taken a loan from the IMF. So the Iranians have said that during these difficult circumstances, uh, where countries like South Korea are Ill illegally withholding Iranian money at a time when the coronavirus is causing serious hardship for many people, Iran is saying to the IMF that we've paid our dues for decades and we have not received any benefits from the IMF, unlike most other countries. So now under these circumstances, we want a loan, which is our right. It's no special favor. It, it is Iran's right to get a loan. Uh, but, but the IMF has refused to do so other, under American pressure. All right, Professor Marandi, thank you so much for your time. You appreciate uh, your analysis. Thank you. That was uh, Professor Marandi, and uh, Professor of English Literature and Orientalism at the University of Tehran in Iran. We'll take a quick break now, and the Globe will continue shortly thereafter.